Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Well, happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. And uh, we do say a very, very special thank you to all the mothers that are here. And uh, I um, share with my mom up in heaven today how much I love her and how much I appreciate her. And uh, she's been gone. I'm getting a little ring back, guys. Y'all getting a little ring back there? John, you can handle that for me. There you go. Feels a little bit better now. All right. But uh, she's been gone now for about 14 years. But um, I will tell you this. uh, I wouldn't be sitting here today without her. Amen. Amen. As I told you many times, I was a rough and tough kid coming up. I mean, I was really tough. I told the folks yesterday in a funeral that I did, uh, I said, uh, my mom always thought my claim to fame one day would be having my picture in the post office. And I'm, I'm really glad that didn't work out that way. And uh, she was, uh, my mom was uh, kind of a, a little short lady, but uh, she, she had a mean left hook. She, really did. she she was left she was left handed and uh, you know these kids today they don't know they don't know what it is I mean I used to have to go outside and my mama used to make me pick my own switch you know that that's terrible uh, I had to go out there and if I picked a short switch you know one of them short ones she sent me back outside make sure I picked a a branch you know but uh, as I share with you I don't have much behind me today and. The reason is, is because my mom beat, beat the rest of it off, but, but I'm glad she did. I miss more spankings than I got, and I'm just really thankful for a, a good godly mom, a mom that loved, loved her boy, and she encouraged me so much, and she was just a great uh, source of wisdom for me, and I, uh, Vicki knows uh, a lot of times uh, my mom stayed up late, and a lot of times around 10 or 11 o'clock, my mom got a, a craving for uh, I hop. She loved I hop, and uh, a lot of times we'd go and we'd have some waffles and we'd have some pancakes or something like that around uh, 10 or 11, 12 o'clock even at night, and just loved just talking to her and just bouncing things off of her. But uh, praise the Lord, you know, if we know Jesus is Lord and Savior, we we're able to see our loved ones again. Amen. Amen. And I'm looking looking forward to that time. Well, it's good to have all of our moms and everybody here. If you're visiting with us, as Pastor Brian said, we're glad to have you. You know, I was looking at a couple of things this morning about moms. I pulled up this one thing. It says, um, there's a woman that gets on a bus with her baby. And the bus driver says, that's the ugliest baby I've ever seen. Ugh. The woman goes to the rear of the bus and sits down fuming. She says to the man next to her, that driver just insulted me. The man says, you go right up there and you tell him off. Go ahead and I'll hold your monkey for you. (laughs) Well, there you go. And uh, this other lady said, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I I have a perfect son. My son's absolutely perfect. And uh, somebody says, well, does he smoke? And she said, no, he doesn't. Does he drink alcohol? No, he doesn't. Does he ever come home late? No, he doesn't. I guess you do really have a perfect son. How old is he? Uh, And she said, he'll be six months old this come Wednesday. (laughs) Well, there's a couple of things to get you going a little bit this morning. Amen. Amen. But uh, we're going to be talking a little bit on the home today, and uh, the the title of the message is, Who in the World is Running Your Home? Who is running your home? And uh, why I say that is because our homes today are in trouble. They're absolutely in trouble. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I mean, our homes are in trouble. I was looking up some statistics uh, this week, and it said teen suicides in the United States are up 29%. <clears throat> from the last 10 years, 29%, over 6,500 teenage suicides last year in the United States alone, over 6,500. Drug overdoses amounts to uh, about, they have grew about 30% in the last two years. In 2021, 77% of all adolescent deaths came from the drug fentanyl, which is 50%, they say 50% more powerful than heroin. 
15.6 million children today live in single mom households. 80% of all single parents are women. Smartphones and computers today among kids 8 to 18 years old accounts for 7 to 9 hours per day. And only 20% of the homes today in the United States attend church on a weekly basis. So I would ask you again, who is in charge of your home? Folks, we have a problem in this world today, and the problem is the home. You know, Satan has a plan, and his plan has been working very, very well the last many years. And his plan is to absolutely tear up and destroy the Christian home. That's what he wants to do. And sadly, he's been doing a great job of being able to do that. And I think those statistics that I shared with you this morning really points out that fact. We've got a problem in this world. So I would say to you again, who is running your house this morning? Now you say, well, pastor, that's easy. You know, I'm running my house. My name's on the mortgage. I pay the mortgage payment every, every month. I'm paying the utilities and all of that. Well, you may be doing all of that. But Satan may be running your home instead of you. And I want to share a few things with you here this morning. You can follow along in your notes. First point is this. It is time for us as parents to make a decision. Look at Joshua, if you would, chapter 24 and first part of verse 15. Joshua says, choose this day whom you will serve. Joshua says that, choose this day whom you're going to serve. I was watching a little of the Shark Tank the other day. I enjoy that show. I like to watch it. And um, like to watch all the entrepreneurs that come out there with their crazy products. And I, one well, of the people I enjoy on the Shark Tank is Mark Cuban. I always enjoy watching him. And Mark Cuban's always famous for, he'll look at people on the Shark Tank and he'll give them a, he'll give them a deal. And then he'll say, you have a chance right here, right now to either say yes or no. And I mean, he doesn't wait. He doesn't wait for anybody else to give a deal or to say percentages. He says, right now, I want an answer. Right here, right now. He puts them on a spot. And if they take too long, he says, I'm out. And they look at him like, are you serious? But he gave them a choice. Either right here, or right now, I want you to make a decision. And that's exactly what Joshua is saying. Joshua is saying, listen, the Lord has delivered us from all kinds of things down through the time that you've been following me as your leader. We have conquered enemy after enemy after enemy. And you know what? Here's what I want to share with you. Based on what the Lord has done for us, based on how he's led us, based on how the Lord has delivered us and how he's cared for us, I want you to know that I want to bring you to a decision. And that decision is this. Who are we going to serve? And folks, that's the same decision that God would have, not only for us as parents to decide today, but for us as individuals. This is a day and time where the Lord would say to all of us, who are you going to serve? Who are you going to serve? Who are we serving right now in our life? Are we serving the Lord or are we serving Satan with our life? You say, well, I'm serving the Lord. I'm here in church. Well, it's one thing to come to church on Sundays and Wednesdays. It's another thing to really be serving the Lord throughout the week. Just because we're here on Sundays and Wednesdays doesn't make us a Christian for the rest of the week. We have to look at ourselves and say, who are we serving today? Who are our families serving? Who are our kids serving? And let me say right off the bat, that our homes today will never, ever rise above our parents. Dads, the spirituality in your home will never rise above your spirituality. Moms, we've got a lot of moms in our, house, in our congregation that you are running the home because you are a single mom running your home. Let me say to you 
that the spirituality in your home, mom, will never rise above you. Don't ask your children to follow a way with God that you are not following. Don't hold your kids to a different goal, a different expectation in life spiritually that you are not willing to follow. Joshua is saying, listen, I want you to understand that the going is going to be very, very tough. And you better make up your mind right now before all the more problems come our way who you're going to serve. It's just like people when they come on line and they say to us, okay, we're getting ready for a hurricane season. And they tell you all the things to do. They tell you the batteries. They tell you the flashlights. They tell you the water. They tell you all the things that you need to go to Home Depot or Publix or whatever to get. That's called hurricane preparedness. Why are you doing that? Why do you go out and why do you buy those things? Because you are getting ready for what may come or may not come. But if a hurricane comes your way, if you've bought those things, you are ready. You know what a lot of people do? A lot of people don't heed those warnings. And how long do they give those warnings? They give those warnings for weeks and weeks and weeks. And they prepare people, try to prepare people, try to indoctrinate people. You need to go buy your hurricane supplies. Now, whether you buy those things or whether you don't buy those things, that is totally up to you. Nobody's going to take you by the hand and take you to Publix or take you to Home Depot and make you and force you to buy flashlights and to buy batteries or whatever, water, whatever it might be. You have to go on your own accord to do those things. Amen? The same as it is right here this morning. The Bible says, Joshua's saying, I want you to choose right now who you're going to serve. Folks, listen. If you don't make up your mind right now to either serve the Lord or not serve the Lord and your family before the going gets tough, it's too late. If you don't make your mind up right now to be a spiritual mom, a spiritual dad, a spiritual individual before the going gets tough, it's going to be too late. You have got to prepare yourself before the tidal wave comes your way. This is a very hard, a very difficult world. Satan is turning up the thermostat. It's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. The demands on you as a spiritual mom and dad are going to get harder and harder and harder. It's going to be harder and harder for you to hold the line in your family spiritually. It's not going to get any easier. It's going to get harder. It's going to get harder for you to hold the line as a mom and dad spiritually and for you to hold up that spiritual example in your home. It's not going to get any easier. It's going to get harder. So what are we saying? We're saying you need to right here and right now make up your mind that no matter what comes your way in your personal life, no matter what comes your way in your home, no matter what happens in this crazy world of ours, no matter what happens, you are going to stay the course. You are going to write in the sand. You're going to draw a line in the sand. And you're going to say, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. That is an absolute. That is not going to change. I don't care what the Joneses are doing. I don't care what the Murphys are doing. I don't care what who and who's doing down the road. Listen, I don't care what they say. As for me and my house, as for me as a parent, as for me as an individual, this is how we are going to run the show. Period and amen. amen. Folks, I'm saying to you this morning, who is running your house? If you don't know who's running your house, you better need to figure it out right here and right now. And if you as a parent are sitting here saying, well, listen, I'm trying to decide, Pastor. Hey, I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to be this way with my kids or not be this way with my kids. Folks, let me tell you something. There's only one way to be that way with your kids. Amen. And that is, thus saith the Lord God. Amen. The Bible is the roadmap for success in your home. The Bible is the roadmap for success in your marriage. It's not something that has ever changed. 
It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not something that you have to turn to figure out what the Lord wants to say at 2023. He wants to say the same thing that he said 2,000 years ago. His principles never change. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. No, we don't need a new and revised way of parenting. We don't need a new and revised way of living our lives, of guiding our homes. No, we need the old-fashioned way that says in the Bible, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That has been a prescription for success for over 2,000 years. Why in the world do you want to mess with it? Amen. That's why I don't understand these churches today. They're tinkering around with truth. I don't understand it. And for me, as pastor of this church, and for us as, as, as people in this church, we are going to hold the line. Amen. It doesn't make any difference. You say, well, wait a minute. You're not going to grow if you preach the truth. We're going to grow because God is going to bless this church, and we're going to grow. You're not going to reach people. We're going to reach people because if God says we're going to reach people, we're going to reach people. It doesn't make any difference what we do. It says if we stay on the word of God, if we stay true to the foundations of God's word, he's going to bless. Amen. And folks, I'm a little crank this morning. I'll tell you. Listen, moms and dads, you listen to this pastor. You stay the line. You stay the line. God has not reinvented things, okay? Don't you bend and bow to the way of parenting that you see that it's all around you. Folks, listen. You keep your kids in alignment with the Word of God. Do not dally one way to the right or to the left. That may not be popular today, but that is the only way to raise successful children is to raise them up in the nurture and admonition of God's Word. And don't you let them make their minds up whether they're coming to church or not. If they're under your roof, they come into church. Amen. 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 They don't need to be calling the shots. I follow folks around the grocery stores all the time. Their mom and their dads and they let them, the kids in the buggy, they make their own decisions. You know, they, they pick stuff out and, you know, they're, they're mean as a snake going down the, all the aisles and the, the mama gets them to the cash register and she buys them candy. Why are you buying them candy? They're a brat. Why are you buying them candy? <laughs> Amen. What's wrong with this world today? Kids acting like a brat all the way through the store. Do you reward the kid with candy? What does that taught the kid? I can be mean as a snake. My mama's still going to buy me a Butterfinger. I don't know about you, but that didn't happen to me when I was growing up. My mama didn't buy me no candy. She bought me something else when I got home. Amen. <laughs> Folks, listen. Listen. You don't bribe your kids. If kids are wrong, kids are wrong. There's nothing wrong with giving them a spanking in God's love. Amen. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, you can't spank the kids today. That'll make the kids deformed. That's, that's punishment if you, if you do that. Oh, so listen, what, what is wrong, man? What is wrong? You know, I, I'm going to practice positivism with my child. <laughs> the Bible says you don't spare the rod. Amen. Now, that don't mean that you get a, you know, a, a big old stick out of the broom closet and beat them half to death. But what that means is that you know there is a consequence to their actions. Amen? Because last I checked, you're the mama and you're the daddy. Amen? Well, I don't feel like doing that. Well, guess what? You're doing that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. It's time to make a decision, folks. Number two, it's time to put your foot down. It's time to put your foot down. What does that mean? Joshua chapter 24 and uh, the last part of verse 15. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. These words are all over Christian homes in America. I can't tell you how many times Vicki and I have visited houses 
People have had us over to eat or people have you know, done different things. I've gone into houses and I have seen this plaque all over the place. Folks, let me tell you something. These are more than words on a plaque. Amen. This is a declaration that is in the word of God. These words are not just a cute little phrase to be said flippantly. Listen, people have this on their walls and they are giving absolutely no regard to what their lifestyle or what their family looks like today. They are not taking these words seriously. Moms and dads, let me ask you this question. How seriously do you regard God in your home? How seriously do you regard God on your home? You say, well, Pastor, hold on a minute. I've got the Bible right on my coffee table. Well, whippy D. It's right next to National Geographic. No, I give it a good place in my house, Pastor. It's right next to the National Enquirer. Well, you probably read the National Enquirer more than you do the Bible. And if I'm coming over to your house, you probably say, hurry up, let me get the dust buster out. And let me just dust bust the cover of the Bible. The pastor's coming over, you know, and you brush off all the plaques in the house and all that stuff, you know. But as your children look at you, moms and dads, think about this. As your children look at you as a mom and dad, what kind of spiritual example do they see in your life? Can I say this to you? As a mom and dad in your house, or if you're a single mom, or if you're a single dad, you, for the most part, are the only Bible that your children are reading. Are you hearing me? As I said again, the spiritual level in your home will never rise above the spiritual level that you are as a mom or dad in your house. So if you say that for me and my house we're going to serve the Lord, do your kids really believe that? I mean, if they, if they really believe that, then you are raising them up the way that God would have you to raise them up. And you know, here's the thing. Kids listen to how dads talk to, to moms. Kids listen to how moms talk to dads. They listen to the words that are said. I heard, I had a guy come up to me one time and he said, Pastor, I've got a problem with my kid. And I said, what's the problem? Well, all they do is cuss. <laughs> Can you have a talk with them? Sure. I brought little Johnny, I forgot his name, but I brought little, so called little Johnny this morning. I brought little Johnny and all said, Johnny, I said, uh, your dad don't want me to have a talk with you. And uh, he says that all you do is, is cuss at home. Do you use cuss words? He said, yeah, I do. I said, where'd you learn them from? He said, daddy. <laughs> well, I went back to Bob. I don't remember if that was his name. But I went back to Bob. I said, Bob, I had a talk with little Johnny. Yeah? What did little Johnny say? I want to know. What did he say? I said, well, he said he learned all the words from you. <laughs> Bob just stood there and stared at me. They listen to what you say. You know what else they do? They watch what you watch. Oh, yeah. They watch TV programs. They watch what you watch on the computer. They watch what you watch on your phones. They follow you around to where you go. They listen to everything. They know everything about you. So what kind of example, moms or dads, are you setting? You know, so many moms and dads say, well, you know, I want my kids, Pastor, to turn out spiritual, to be spiritual kids. I, I want them to turn out this way and this way. And, that. and that's great. And we pray that you do. But what kind of example are you setting for them to be able to get there? Amen? You know, as your children look at you, what kind of spiritual example are you setting? We say, well, just on Sundays or an occasional Wednesday, are you walking with the Lord? Are you setting a godly example 
for your kids every single day. Can your kids honestly say that as for my mom and dad this morning, they are truly serving the Lord? Pastor, when I look at my mom and dad, they are truly leading me down spiritual paths in my life. Pastor, as I think about my mom and dad this morning, they are truly leading me to love the Lord. Pastor, as I look at my mom and dad, they care and they love us enough to keep us and to safeguard us from the evil of this world. Folks, you say, well, Pastor, those are pretty direct questions. But you know something, folks? Those are the questions that our kids are asking asking us today. It burdens my heart and hurts my heart to know that there are only 20% statistics say of families coming to church anymore. That didn't used to be that way years and years ago when I was first starting my ministry 45 years ago. I can remember standing outside of the church and I would see family after family after family come to church, moms and dads together. And they were having kids, they were bringing kids along with him. Our children's ministry was busting. Parents were every which way. But you know what's happening today is as we're doing this today, as we're having church here, many families are out at the beaches today. They're at Disney World, they're over at uh, SeaWorld watching Flipper. Or they're over at at, at Disney World paying their tithes and offerings to Mickey Mouse. What are you teaching your children? You say, what do you you mean, Pastor? I'm teaching them that a day at the beach is more important than a day at church. I'm teaching them, hey, hey, you know, hey, you don't need to be at church. You can be other places. Folks, I'm not telling you that you've got to be in church 100 percent of the time, 52 Sundays out of the year, you can have a break. I have a few breaks here and there. But what am I saying? I'm saying that kids used to, ought to look at you and they ought to see that the important thing in your household is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'm going to hit some toes when I say this. Sometimes parents come up to me and they say, well, pastor, why? I'll say, why haven't I been seeing you? Well, you don't understand. Bobby Joe over here has been playing baseball, and we're out here watching Bobby Joe out here on the baseball field for the last three months. What are you teaching Bobby Joe? Practice on Sundays is more important than coming to church on Sundays. In fact, there are some parents that are more faithful to going to watching Bobby Joe practice on Sundays than they are bringing him to church on Sundays. Boy, it's getting quiet in here. You know what you're teaching? You're teaching your child that sports is more important than Jesus. You know, when I was growing up, there wasn't no such a thing as having practice for Bobby Joe on Sundays. You know why? Because coaches knew, for one thing, they respected church more. And number two, they knew if they had practice on a Sunday that they weren't going to get Bobby Joe to come practice. But today, things have changed, right? Today, people have a a fit when Publix closes down, sometimes on Easter. Imagine that. I used to remember a day where Publix wasn't open on Sundays, period. Amen. 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 You say, I can't imagine that. Well, guess what? If you can't get enough food to eat for six days, pity on you if you have to go on Sundays. Amen. Amen. Folks, listen, what I'm saying to you is the importance of Jesus Christ in this world has plummeted, if you haven't noticed. Spirituality is at an all-time low in this nation. It's getting more and more ungodly all the time. In fact, I was reading just yesterday that the uh, temple of Satan, you can look this up on your, in, on your uh, internet today, the temple of Satan is growing and growing and growing. In fact, it's one of the fastest growing religions in the United States of America is, Satan, is Satanism. And it's so, 
It's so appealing right now that they are opening up satanic after-school care for boys and girls all over this nation, and they've just produced some satanic school books and books for the kids to read in the after-school clubs. Amen. And you know what? They are being, for, school districts are being forced to open these places up to satanic rituals in schools. Why? Because they have got freedoms now to do whatever they want to do. Amen. We're having all kinds of things going because this world today is an anything goes world. Amen. Amen. Anything goes world today. We have folks around our church sometimes. We have a lady that lives somewhere over here. I don't know where she is. I don't really care. But have a woman over here. She complains about us all the time. She sends letters. She sends emails to us. She says that our church is too bright at night. <laughs> it is. It's too bright. Our cross, our cross is way too bright at night. It, uh, it hurts her ability to, ability to do astrology. I'm, and then she says, sometimes your sign out there, it flashes at night. Well, that got me so upset that this past week we've had some electrician doing some stuff around here. I ordered two brighter lights. <laughs> I got so excited about it that I even bought the lights myself. <laughs> Our electrician is going to be putting those in this week. Out there in front of the cross. You think that cross was bright? Oh, baby. The next space flight they take at NASA. <laughs> they're going to be able to see that Jesus reigns here at 1430 <laughs> Bel Air Road. <laughs> and you don't think I have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> you say, Pastor, that's mean. No, I enjoyed every bit of it. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to get another, another email. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know why we have a light out there like that? Because we want to let people know that Jesus is still the answer around here. You know? I told you about the lady that got all upset when we painted our church red. It used to be white. Nothing wrong with a white cross. But then we painted it red one day. She come on to an appointment with the pastor. When people have an appointment and, you know, they come in my office, they got one in, they got a big Bible now. I'm not talking about little thin lines. I'm talking about a big Bible. And they bring a big Bible in my office. I always know I'm in for a fun time. <laughs> she told me that this whole church had gone satanic. <laughs> Serious. She said, you have gone over to the dark side. I said, how have I done that? You painted the church red. I can't believe you've done that. That church, that church, that, that ch cross out there was painted white for all those years. You have gone crazy. And I said to her, I said, ma'am, I said, did you ever consider that the red on that cross could be saying that that's the blood of Jesus that was shed for your sins? <sighs> I didn't think about that. She still thought it was evil. So she's not here anymore because <laughs> we didn't change the colors. Amen. Now, getting back to what I was saying. Parents, you are the spiritual standard in your home. You're the book that your kids read every day. If you don't lead them spiritually, let me say this to you. Satan will be very happy to, to step in and to take your role in your home. Dads, the most important thing you can do is to raise your children, not stay extra at work. Your work's going to always be there. Your kids won't be. Amen? 
the best thing you can do, dads, is to keep your wife happy. To date her, all right? To show her you love her. Let your kids see some love in your family, all right? All right? Men, you ought to see what you're looking at me like. Ladies, ladies, show some love to your husband. I know it might be tough, all right? But show some love to your husband. Let your kids see love in your home, okay? And if you're going to disagree, if you're going to argue, go somewhere else and let it happen. Don't let your kids see that. Amen? Amen. Your kids don't need that. All right? The answer sometimes in your family needs to be no to your children. It doesn't always need to be yes. And you know sometimes your kids have a habit of trying to, 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 uh, to wear you down as moms and dads, don't they? They don't know when to shut up. They don't know what no means. And they keep on coming at you and coming at you and coming. You need to make your no mean no. And you need to make it and be based on biblical truth. If you don't want them going and hanging around with Johnny because Johnny is a drug addict, it needs to be no. If you don't want your kids to go to some kind of a party that you have a check in your spirit about, just because all of Barbie's friends are going... You need to say no. Sometimes you as a parent, it is not a popularity contest. Amen? Amen. Sometimes I was raising my kids and I was not the most popular popular, uh, parent on the planet because it's not all about popularity. I want to be liked, but sometimes I'm not going to be liked. Well, Dad, everybody else is going, well, everybody else don't mean you. I've been around the block. I understand what's going to be going on. Listen, you need to go back to your room and you need to change clothes. Why? You're showing too daggum much. Well, no, I said, well, you're not going out to be a billboard that everybody's going to be looking at. You're going to dress the way Jesus wants you to dress. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, I know that's old fashioned. I know that's old fashioned. But boys will be boys. Amen. 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 Some ladies say, I saw, my, I saw my guy looking at a woman. Well, you better be happy he's looking at a woman. That's another sermon. I just offended a few people. I can tell it, right? That wasn't in my notes. I just threw that in there. It's time to count the cost. Look at Luke chapter 14, first part of verse 25 through 30. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. You won't first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it. For if you lay the foundation and are unable to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, This person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Listen. Following the Lord in your home, in your marriage, with your kids, abiding and standing firm in his promises and in his principles is absolutely the hardest, most most difficult thing that you will ever do in your life. It is serious business. That's why so many families are failing today spiritually, because it's not easy. It is very difficult very hard. In fact, it's the hardest thing that you'll ever have to do in your life. It's not as easy as it used to be. Why? Because not many people are rowing the boat the way that you're rowing the boat today. You are rowing the boat upstream, not downstream. You are going against the tide. You are not going with the tide. Spirituality is not going up in this world, it's coming down. 
parents that are raising their children the way that you are raising your children and the nurture and admonition of the Lord is not getting more. It's getting less. Kids that are coming to spiritual parents and saying, this is not the way that Johnny's being raised, this is not the way that Lisa is being raised, is being heard more than ever before. And folks, sometimes the devil will try to tell you as spiritual parents that you are old-fashioned, that you have lost it. In fact, if you don't change your way of parenting, if you don't start giving in to your children, that your children are going to hate your guts, that your children are going to pack up and leave your house, that your children are going to just, they're going to despise you. All kinds of things Satan may be saying to you today as a Christian parent. You say, Pastor, I never thought I would see the day where it's so hard for me to be able to hold the line. Folks, it's never been harder. And it's a test to you as a mom and dad. It's a test to your spirituality. That's why it's so important that you as a mom and dad stay in the principles of God's Word, that you read the Bible, that you pray as parents, that you pray as a family. Listen, when you go out to eat, you circle your family around and you pray. Pray together. Your kids, they now might not see any other family in Cracker Barrel doing that, but let them see you do that. Let you see them grab hands and show the importance of thanking God. Let them see you pray at home over them before they go to bed. Let them see you have a devotional with them. Let you see them making biblical, you making biblical decisions before them. They are watching you every day. Either he's Lord this morning of your family or he is not. It is either yes or no. You say, Pastor, he's halfway. If he's halfway, he's not. Amen. He's either, you're either all in or you're all out. Amen. Lord says here in this scripture, when you sit down and you count the cost to build a spiritual home, to build a spiritual marriage, you better be careful. You better understand then I want to tell you something. If you're going to do this, it's going to come with a cost. Amen. It is going to cost you. And it's going to cost you dearly. A Christian marriage costs a Christian couple. Amen. Yes, it's going to cost you riding the waves when you disagree. It's going to cost you of being able to say that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. You ain't jumping because you know that God has put you there together. Amen. It's going to cost you. And it's also going, to, also going to cost you to raise your children up the way that it needs to be. You're not going to be able to go and do what the crowd is doing. Your kids are not going to be able to go and do all the other things that the other kids are going to have, to, they're, they're going to, because you're going to say no and you're going to be unpopular. What does that mean? That means that you're paying a price. But praise God that you're paying the price because your kids, listen, when they're 18, they may go high haywire. And we know some kids that have. But I will tell you this at least when those kids get old enough to walk out your door, then they're making their own decisions in their life. At least you can say, as for me and my house, while they were there under my roof, we serve the Lord. Amen. You'll be able to say, I did my best. And let me say this. Let me just say this. One of the greatest guilt trips that he puts parents on sometimes is your kids, when they're out of your house, they go haywire. Now, you listen to me, and you listen close. If you've raised your kids up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, if they've gone crazy, if they've gone nuts, if they're making decisions that you don't understand, if their life is something you look at today and you don't even recognize it, and Satan's coming to you, and he's trying to tell you that if you'd done this, if you'd done this, if you'd done this, if you'd have been this kind of parent and that kind of parent, your kids would be different. Let me tell you something. That's a lie from hell. 
That's a lie from hell. Kids are a product of their choices. And if they grow up and they go nuts, they're going nuts because they want to go nuts. They're not going nuts because you've brought them around to being nuts. If they want to drink of the, of the Kool-Aid of this world, they're drinking out of the Kool-Aid. You ain't making them drink. Amen. Amen. Don't take that guilt from Satan. Don't you take it. But here's what you need to do. You need to keep praying for him. And don't give up praying for him because the Bible says that the seed of his word will never return void. You say, well, pastor, it's been a while. You keep on praying. You keep on praying. Don't you give up praying. And always be there when your kids come back home. Just like the prodigal son, it may take them a while because some of our kids are hard-headed. They're very hard-headed. They're very, very hard-headed. Don't ever close the door. Always be there and always welcome them with open arms. Amen. Amen. Don't give up on the prodigal kids. Either he's Lord or not. Either he's Lord of your home or he's not. This isn't up for debate This is not a multiple choice question. Look at Joshua chapter 24, verse 23. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. Some of us need to throw away things in our houses. You ever had a yard sale? You ever took junk out of your house and you're amazed that people will come by and buy your junk? Amen. Some of us need to take some junk out of our house. We've got some things in our homes, and I'm not talking about statues. I'm not talking about objects. I'm talking about things that we have in our lives that are wrong. They are things that are, should not exist in a Christian home. I don't know what it is. It might be the wrong things on your TV. It might be the wrong things on your TikTok. Or your knock-knock or whatever else it's called. <laughs> it might be the wrong things that you're playing In your car. It might be wrong language. It might be wrong attitudes. It might be a bottle. It might be a pill bottle. I don't know what it is. But we need to do a house inspection. We need to do an inspection of our lives today and say, what is there about me as a mom and spiritual mom and dad that my kids are looking at that they shouldn't be looking at? What are some bad habits that I have that should not be there? What is it that my kids look at me and they don't see Jesus in? When I look in the mirror as a spiritual mom and dad, what is it about my life that does not give the reflection of Jesus? Now, folks, I know that takes a lot of guts to be able to look in the mirror like that. But that's how the Lord would have us look in the mirror. He's saying this morning, listen, you need to do an honest inspection. And, folks, this goes along with me as well as it goes along with you. I've told you many times, my halo is just as rusty as yours. I was not a perfect parent. Vicky was, but I wasn't. I wasn't perfect. And there's been many times down through the years that I've had to keep tell my kids that I'm sorry for different things in my life. Because you know what? I never want to be so big that I can't tell my kids that I'm sorry. Because you know what? I'm not a perfect dad. You're not a perfect mom. You're not a perfect dad. And if you've got some things that you need to tell your kids about, you need to tell them about it. Amen. If you got some things in your life that aren't right, you need to get right with God. 
Some of our homes have traded the truth of God for a lie. Look at Romans chapter 1, verse 25. They traded the truth about God for a lie. This is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. There are some families today that have pushed everything of God out of their home. And they run to me, or they run to churches, or they run to God, and they say, God, listen to me very close. Why is my house in shambles? Why? I'll tell you why. It's because you've done exactly what this verse says. You have pushed everything of God out of your home. So why, if you do that, why do you expect God to bless your house? Why do you expect God to bless your marriage and bless your children? Why do you even expect that? Why do you even bother to even pray when you've pushed everything of God out of your life and out of your home? Folks, God has abandoned you. He's abandoned your home. And you know what you've done? You've actually reaping what you have sown. Proverbs chapter 28, 26, those who trust in themselves, you're trusting in yourself as mom and dad. I know how to raise my kids. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have the smarts. You don't have the intellect. You don't know tomorrow from today. You don't know anything about how to raise your kids. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence, but I will tell you this. You are not a parent apart from the knowledge of Jesus Christ in your life. But those who trust themselves are fools. You're a fool if you think you can raise your family today apart from the word of God and apart from having your family in church. But those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Those who walk in the wisdom and the direction and the guidance of God's word, you are doing great things. And you know what? God's blessing your family. I'm not trying to say that everything's hunky-dory in your family. But I'll tell you this. You're sowing the right seed. Amen. And lastly, in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3, it says, A house that is built on wisdom, a house that is built on God's word, Become strong through good sense. This world ain't got sense no more. We look around us and I have never seen so many stupid people (laughs) in my whole entire life. People are not getting smarter. They're getting stupid. They are so full of themselves that they think they know how to run their life, run their family, apart from the word of God. The Bible calls those kinds of people fools. A stronger word would be, the Bible calls those kinds of people stupid. (laughs) To take yourself away from God's word to believe that you can live your life apart from Jesus Christ. That's why he went to the cross. That's why he died on the cross. That's why he shed his blood for us over 2,000 years ago. You know why? Because he knew we were incapable of being able to go to heaven. There's never been a person born, never will be a person born, that is capable of going to heaven on their own. You can't be good enough. It's impossible because you're not good. We're all sinners. We've all become short of the glory of God. We're not smart enough to go to heaven. You can't do enough good works to get to heaven. It's impossible. So God died for it. God sent his son to die for us. And then he says, you are not capable of living your life. It's impossible. So what I've done is I have given you principles in how to live your life, how to live, guide your marriage, guide your home, I've given you those principles. It's the word of God. If you don't follow the rule book, you will not be successful. I'll just say this. If somebody came to you and they said, I am going to give you a book. And in this book is guidance. A hundred percent full Proof, success, 100% for every single issue, 
for every single challenge, and your life as an individual, as your issues and challenges in marriage, and for your issues and challenges with all of the issues and challenges you'll ever face in raising your children. If you follow this book, you will be 100% blessed of God. If I was to say, why wouldn't you take this? You would say, well, pastor, if somebody offered me that, I would be crazy to turn it down. That's what God's saying this morning. God is bumfuddled. He's trying to say, I don't get it. I've given you everything you need for success in your life, in your marriage, and in your home. The problem is not with the book, the Bible. It has no error. It's 100% correct. It's foolproof. The problem is not with the book. The problem is with the person that's holding the book. Folks, the problem is not with God. He has not lost his power. Amen. He has not lost his awesomeness. He has not lost his directness as far as the way, showing us the way. No, folks, listen to this pastor. The problem is with us. And if we let him know in repentance that we ask him and we tell him we're sorry for the way we have been conducting ourselves as a husband and wife or as an individual, as a parent, he is there to forgive you this morning. And he is going to give you everything you need to bring yourself back to being that godly mom, that godly dad, that godly wife, that godly husband, that godly individual that you need to be. And if you say, Pastor, I don't even know to even, I don't even know how to parent my home because you know what? I don't even know Jesus. Then you know something? I can't think of a better day today, especially if you're a mom, than for you to come down and take Pastor Brian's hand in just a minute and say, Hey, Pastor Brian, you know, I don't even know Jesus is my Lord and Savior. But I want to be a godly mom for my kids. I want to accept Jesus right now. And that goes for men, too. You can't have your home right if you don't know Jesus. That's the first step. And there's moms and dads that are here that you need to come down to this altar. You need to pour down to this altar this morning. And you need to pray for your children. Some of those kids may be in your home. They're struggling. Some of those kids may be out of your home. They're struggling. You need to come and you need to pray. And you need to bring your kids to the foot of the cross. And you need to say, I am done with the guilt that Satan is putting on my plate. I have done the very best I can. I'm praying for my kids. I'm supporting my kids. I am leaving my kids right now where I need to leave my kids every day, and that is at the foot of the cross. And to look up into his face and say, Lord Jesus, you listen to me, folks. Lord Jesus, as much as I love my children, I know that you love them more. And I'm bringing them to you this morning. And I still believe in the power of prayer. Let's stand, please, as all of our heads are...